The model properties dialog box is an important utility in Creo Parametric where you not only can get a lot of information about your model, but also you can perform a lot of actions. And in this video, we'll take a look at the model properties dialog box in part mode, sheet metal mode, and assembly mode. To get to the command, you can go to file, prepare, model properties and because it's a little buried in the file menu I recommend placing this in the quick access toolbar so you can get to it quickly and easily so first section we have materials and if you don't have a material signed you can navigate to the different materials that you have available right click and choose assign and then click OK and the material will be applied to the model next up we have units from here, you can change to one of the default unit sets that Creo Parametric provides, or you could create your own set of units. Also, we have our accuracy in here, and accuracy controls the smallest curve length that Creo Parametric is capable of seeing, and there is a separate video on model accuracy. And since we applied a material, now we can go to our mass properties, click the calculate button, and that way we can see what this part weighs. All right, let's click OK out of there. The next section that we have are relations, parameters, and instances. So for example, relations, you click the change button, it's going to open up the relations dialog box. And same thing with parameters, click the change button, you're going to get the parameters dialog box. And instances, if you have a family table in your model, you would be able to see how many instances or whether this was an instance or a generic. I will click the change button and this brings open the family table dialog box. So as you see, these commands are available in the Creo Parametric interface and the ribbon in different locations. But if you can't remember where they are, well, of course you could use the command search or just use the model properties dialog box. All right, here we have our tolerance. You can change your tolerance setup. We also have this area here for names, which is interesting. You click on this, and this is another place where you can change the names of features. Then we have our tools section. So if you have flexibility defined, you would be able to see it here. If you wanted to define flexibility in your model, this will bring up the dialog box in part mode. You can define flexibility to dimensions, features, geometric tolerances, parameters, surface finishes, and as they added in Creo Parametric 4.0, I believe, materials. Materials can be flexible for your parts. Then we have shrinkage. If you are doing mold design, you can apply a shrinkage to the model. If I click change over here, it says, hey, wait, you don't have a mold design license. You're not able to do that. We also have our simplified reps available from here. Click on the change button and it brings open the view manager. And Pro Program allows you to write essentially code that affects how your model is going to regenerate. You can turn the regeneration of your model into an interactive process where upon regeneration, you can ask someone to input values of dimensions or answer yes, no questions or different parameters. And this is essentially the program that's used to generate this model. And we also have the ability to define uh, interchange assemblies. And right now, uh, for an interchange, that uh, will be different components that can be swapped out for one another. But I'm in a part. All right. Next up here for model interfaces, we have reference and backup. And this is another one that I did a video for. The reference creation control dialog box allows you to control the ability of this model to make external references and the ability of other models to make external references to this one. So this is very important for managing, especially in top-down design. And then underneath there, sensor. Uh, I don't have the sensor module that was added in Creo Parametric 4.0, so I don't use that. And the last thing that we have in here is detail options. So if you use model-based definition, which I highly recommend that you do, here you have essentially the same kind of detail options that you have in drawing mode. You can use these to apply to the different annotations that you would create in the model. 
All right, let's close out of there. And that is the model properties dialog box in part mode. Let's hop over to a sheet metal part so I can show you some of the differences in that one. And again, I have model properties in my quick access toolbar. And so there's a whole section in here for sheet metal. In addition to that, you have your model thickness available from the uh, materials group. And usually when I want to change the thickness, I'll edit definition of the first feature. But again, nice that you can also get to it right from in here. And underneath the sheet metal section, we have bend allowance, bends, relief, edge treatment, and miter cuts. And the reason I just rattled off those, if I click the change for any one of these, what I like is that you get a dialog box where you can go, oh, here's where I can change my bend allowance, or here's where I can change the default setting for how I'm creating bends in the model, and here's my default relief for some of the different secondary walls that I'm putting in, and here's edge treatment default settings and also miter cuts. And by the way, you can set up all this stuff and then you can import export a sheet metal preferences file. All right, let's cancel out of there. Next up we have in here fixed geometry. Hey, we can define what geometry we want to be fixed in our model by default whenever we are performing different operations. And bend order. If you're not a sheet metal manufacturer, I don't know why you would be messing with defining bend order tables. Uh, if that's not your specialty, if that's not what you're doing, let the experts do that. The people are actually going to make your sheet metal parts. And the last one in here underneath the sheet metal section, uh, if I click on the design rules, this allows you to define different design rules in the model. You can edit them uh, for maybe you want to control how close someone can make different cuts to the edges and other different functions like that for making sure that you're not doing bad design of a sheet metal part. All right, and the rest of this is pretty much the same that you have in part mode. Let's close out of here, and now I'm going to hop over to an assembly model. And again, let's go to the model properties dialog box, and we have our material selection uh, section, relations, parameters, and instances, features, and geometry. We have different tools in here. Uh, again, the same as before. There is an additional assembly uh, section in here. So here we have collision detection. You can change the default if you were to define a mechanism. Uh, if you want no collision detection during your uh, analyses or your playbacks that you're running, global collision detection, be careful turning that on because that can really slow down your playbacks and partial collision uh, detection as well. And with partial, that allows you to select the different components that you are concerned about maybe colliding into each other during a mechanism analysis and analyze them. And one thing I want to mention here is that I have a few different options in here that you're not going to have by default because if I go to File, Options, Configuration Editor, there is an option Enable Advanced Collision and by default it's set to No. I have that one set to Yes in my model. All right, let's cancel out of there. Mechanism, if we click on the change button, here we get a dialog box where you can have it issue a warning when the assembly fails to connect. That one can also be controlled by a config.pro option, which I can't remember at the moment. Uh, you can turn off the ability of the model to use regeneration values that are defined in components that are assembled. I I'm kind of against uh, using regeneration values a lot, especially when I'm defining mechanisms in components that are going to go into higher and higher and higher level assemblies because that can cause issues. Here's where you can change the relative tolerance of the analysis and also characteristic length. Um, this is a setting, again, if you're having certain issues when you are running mechanisms, changing the characteristic length can help with that. All right, let's cancel out of there. And then there is an animation section in here. I just want to show you, later on I'm going to do a video on animation, but every license of Creo Parametric comes with the design animation option. And when I click on this, here it gives me a ribbon that allows me to set up a, an animation where I can have maybe my components 
uh, going to different explode states, or I could have you know my uh, components becoming transparent. You essentially change your camera position, how your uh, model is zoomed in and zoomed out and oriented. You can make really, really nice movies out of here, and you can also photo render them. And so, nice little module in there. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.